Every year, over a billion dollars in winnings are awarded at American thoroughbred horse races. Those prizes are divided up among owners, trainers, and jockeys. And they're all funded by gambling. With the whole thing. I won and I hit all my bets. I hit the pick three, I hit the exact, I hit the double, I hit the win bet, and I hit the triple. It's going to come out to close to 2,000. I got to run. See you tomorrow. Betting on horse racing is growing every year. This year, a record $15.8 billion in North America alone. Simulcast transmissions mean gamblers can watch races anywhere. Gary Walker a New York cabbie, follows races on television monitors at the track. Experience is the best teacher. You, you know when you got to stop. You know when it's not your day. It's not, it's not moving at all. Look at this. The horse player knows when it's not his day. The gambler doesn't know when it's his day. Come on, come on, here. Die-hard gamblers like Gary are the lifeblood of the racing industry. I kind of went on a limb a little bit on this because I, I, I just like the horse. I just hope the one gets close. If the one gets close, we're good. Go on, get him out. Gary spends every free day and thousands of dollars a year at the races. This is a long-term investment. You're in it for the long haul. This game might seem like you're going to get rich overnight, but it, you know, it's a give and take. It's a, it, it's a tug of war. It's you against the track. And the track usually wins. Yeah, these, these are all different type of numbers. Only I can read it. This is a language of its own. Just threw half my bankroll today almost. So, I mean, I only have like one more shot today. Otherwise, I'm not going to, you know. Right on time. Don't too much Come on. Come on, swing it up. Swing him up! Can't, he can't change leads. Come on. Come on! Having a bad day, Gary bets on a horse to place, meaning to come in first or second. It is a safer bet, but it's a much smaller payoff. I won the bet, but I got place. We're basically here in the gambling business. Of course. And we don't like to admit it, whether it be a stable boy or an owner. He's in the gambling business. I don't care how you cut it. W.T. Young has been a legend in Lexington, Kentucky. He'd already made fortunes in peanut butter and health care when, in the 1980s, he decided thoroughbred breeding was the business to be in. Before his death in January 2004, he spoke to us about Overbrook, his stunning 2,400-acre breeding farm, home to 100 mares and 10 stallions, including the most famous stud in the world, Stormcat. We raised Stormcat instead of selling him. It turned out that he was a good racehorse, not a champion. We put him into stallion service, and um, after a few crops, he, he produced winners, and now he's become the leading sire. I reckon he is the leading sire in the world. Breeding is where racing's most impressive profits are made, and that's why most horses disappear from the racetrack in their third year and go on to their next career, procreating. Stormcat currently commands the top price in the business, half a million dollars for each successful impregnation. Which I think is obscene, but I point out that I don't set, or the Overbrook doesn't set the price. <clears throat> the market sets the price. Stormcat has fathered hundreds of foals, and he's made Overbrook one of the most profitable breeding operations in the world. The thoroughbred industry, wisely, has prohibited artificial insemination. In other words, Stormcat, can only cover one mare at a time. It keeps the industry pure and puts some restrictions on it. Oh, those boots we put on the mare's hind legs? If that stallion kicks, that takes a lot of the sting out of it or the cut, and they, it protects the stallion. They've come in handy a number of times, because you never know about these mares. Sometimes they're not as receptive as you are. Well, here comes Stormcat across the bridge there from his paddock. He's still quite a handful, even though he's 20 years old. <laughs> American Seas, that's a cool half million to us. If he always covers like that, he's just, he's like a machine. He comes in, makes a lot of noise. It's one jump. 
and uh, reads the mare. He gets down and invariably he kicks. And lots of times he rears up. And then Wes washes him off on the way out and he tries to kick Wes. And then he goes back to the stall. He knows who the boss is. <laughs> we all work for him, you know. <laughs> At Overbrook, a whole new crop of foals are enjoying carefree days in the paddocks with their mothers. They will stay with the mares for about six months. After their first birthdays, most will head for those yearling sales and on to the tracks. Each of these toddlers has the blood of superstars in his veins, and each one is made for one thing, to race his heart out. When we return, a black Ferrari, a gutsy gelding, and a Kentucky aristocrat head for the greatest races in the world. Thoroughbreds are powerful, but very fragile, and that puts their trainers under enormous pressure. If you manage a horse right, you're on your way. Push him too hard, or maybe not hard enough, and you can blow it. And then there's plain old luck. So many contenders desperate for Derby glory, but only a few will make it. And along the way, hearts, egos, and fortunes rise and fall at breakneck speed. The Kentucky Derby is six months away but there is already triple crown buzz. Vindication, the black Ferrari, is a star. Here for Bob Baffert, one, two, under the Satish Sanan and Bob Baffert are on the ride of their lives. Kentucky Derby! Vindication. In January, Vindication wins the prestigious Eclipse Award as two-year-old champion. I think Bob is, is one of the best in the world. There's no question about it. He's been here. And then, one, out of the blue, a stunning reminder that all that power rides on a very delicate frame. The problem that he has is right in here. Just 10 days after the Eclipse Awards, Bob Baffert notices that Vindication has a slight limp. It's like a death in the family because it's just, you have these high hopes, high expectations. The news is simply terrible. Baffert's triple crown horse has a very bad ligament strain. It's devastating for a horse like this, you know, especially with his potential and, you know, and this is my triple crown type of horse, so. Vindication will not be running in the Kentucky Derby. In fact, he may never race again. Horses like strawberries, they go bad overnight, and that's what happened here. According to custom, all horses officially turn a year older on January 1st. Thoroughbreds have to be three to compete in the triple crown races. With Vindication out of the running, the field is wide open. 446 horses are nominated to run in the 2003 Kentucky Derby. The most ever. Front runners one week, bums the next. They drop like flies, and only 16 will make it to the Derby. By March, one team begins to dominate the road to the Triple Crown. Bobby Frankel, the Brooklyn-born trainer who's won millions in prizes but never a Derby, has a magnificent horse. Kentucky bred with a regal pedigree, Empire Maker wins an important prep race in a romp. Dancer, Empire Maker, yes! Just before they walked in the gate, I felt that, that he's gonna win real big. He's gonna win way off. I thought, I almost pictured the race right, before, right as it happened, and he won like I thought he would, you know? Empire Maker is a sure favorite to enter the Derby, and maybe even to win. Everybody gets a chance in life. One time, especially in this business. And they're off. Meanwhile, the New York bred gelding, Funny Side, is making an impression on his trainer, Barkley Tag. Tag's never had a horse good enough to enter in the Derby, but his fortunes may be changing. Very impressive in his debut. Funny Side by 15 or more. When he won his first three races, I thought he was Derby material. I thought he was Triple Crown material. Robin Smullen is Barkley Tag's assistant and Funny Side's exercise writer. It's been since September of last year that I've been on him every day, and he's was a handful. Funny Side has a hunger for speed and a big ego. He has his own ideas about what he wants to do. You compromise to him, he doesn't compromise to you. And that's, you know, sometimes that's what makes a good horse a good horse. It's their ideas of how good they are. 
you have to have confidence in what you do, and he certainly does. The jock has to be in a, give a happy medium there. He has to kind of let him run his race, but contain him the best he can without making him angry and the horse goes to the outside or starts to bear out too much or something like that, which will make him lose a race. The race itself belongs to the horse and the jockey. All the work and training that's gone into a thoroughbred is now in the hands of someone just over 100 pounds, traveling on a 1,000-pound animal at 40 miles an hour. And a jockey can't just ride, he has to drive. Jose Santos was once one of the top earners in racing. In 1988, he won an Eclipse Award for Best Jockey, but he has never won a Kentucky Derby. And in 1992, in a horrific accident, he nearly lost it all. He was thrown from his horse and broke 11 bones. It took time for his body and his confidence to recover. So when the jockey got hurt and, uh, and disappeared for three or four months, you lose money, you lose racing, and the more important of all, you lose your friends. Now the comeback jockey has teamed up with a real long shot. Funny side is put to a drive. New York's Funny Side. In another important prep race, Funny Side comes in second, behind the aristocrat, Empire Maker. Down to the finish, Empire Maker. Just a little nudge at the line to hold off the late challenge from Funny Side. It looks like the New York gilding and the Kentucky aristocrat are on their way to Churchill Downs. For Bob Baffert, it hasn't been a good year. With vindication out of the race, he decides to enter two horses in the Derby, Calf Wayne and Indian Express. And for extra help, he turns to a higher power. How you doing? Hey, could you come in here and bless some horses? I, I, need, I need some help, man. All right, do your thing, boys. What's the, right, right. What's the horse's name? Calf Wayne. Come here, boy. Come here. We got, I got somebody to help you out here. You've given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. Well, sheep and oxen, yes, and the birds, and the beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea. Good luck. Well, nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you, nice meet you All right. Good luck. All right, man. Take care. Okay. Bye. All right, buddy. We'll take every edge we can, I'm telling you. It all comes together the first Saturday in May, the run for the roses, when thoroughbred stable to stardom continues.